Welcome back to the Mirage GT build video series. In this video, we're going to be installing our engine and gearbox. As usual, a full list of the torque settings for this video can be found on our website using the link in the description below. Now that our electrical system has been installed in our chassis, we're ready to install our engine and gearbox. The Morass GT chassis supports both the BMW M52 or M54 engines and a manual 5 or 6 speed gearbox. If you are installing an M52 engine, you will not need to change any of the engine support brackets. If you are installing an M54 engine, you will need to change the larger right engine support bracket as shown for the smaller M52 version, which will be included in the kit. For the purpose of this video, we'll be installing an M54 engine and a 5-speed gearbox. Additionally, we'll be changing the left M54 engine support bracket for the M52 version, as this particular chassis doesn't have the multiple left engine support bracket that all future chassis now have as standard. Both sets of our engine and gearbox mount rubbers are universal and can be fitted to either side of our chassis. Our engine has been removed from its donor vehicle and rebuilt as per new specifications. When removing the engine and gearbox from the donor vehicle, all electrical, fuel and water connections should be disconnected. The exhaust, exhaust manifolds, inlet manifolds and airbox have been removed along with the power steering pump and air conditioning pump, both of which are not used on the Mirage GT. We've also removed the alternator, however this will be refitted to the engine in a later video, with a different length belt. We've also removed both engine and gearbox mounts. Before installing our engine and gearbox, it's advisable to remove the front subframe, which we temporarily refitted to our chassis during the installation of the electrical system, as this will make the process of fitting the engine and gearbox a lot easier. We're going to be using an engine hoist to lift our engine and gearbox into position above our chassis. It is strongly recommended that you use an extra pair of hands at this stage and work safely. With our engine now roughly in position above our chassis, we can slowly start to lower it into the engine bay. It's advisable to apply a bit of pressure to the gearbox end here, as this will tilt the engine at a more optimum angle. With our engine virtually in place, we're going to fit our gearbox mounts. Our chassis has been fitted with both a 5-speed mount and a 6-speed mount. As our engine has a 5-speed gearbox, we're going to fit our gearbox rubbers onto the 5-speed mount. Any vehicles being fitted with a 6-speed gearbox would require the 5-speed mount to be removed, and in this instance, our gearbox rubbers will be fitted further back onto the 6-speed mount instead. Notice how both of our gearbox rubbers are each marked with a location lug. These should be positioned facing upwards and positioned towards the rear of the chassis. We're now ready to lift our engine and gearbox onto our gearbox mounts. To do this, we're going to use an additional hoist. However, alternatively, a transmission jack can be used from underneath the gearbox to achieve the same result. With the back of our engine and gearbox now in position, we're going to secure it in place with the bolts and washers provided.
It's now time to fit our engine support brackets. We're going to secure these to our engine first, starting with the small mount on the left side. We're going to remove the side lug from our right engine mount, like so. And now, we can move our engine mount rubbers into place. Be sure to fit them with the locator lug fitted in the inner hole. And secure them loosely using the bolts provided. Once our engine mounts and rubbers are in position and located, we can now carefully lower our engine onto its mounts. With our engine now resting safely in place on its mounts, we can secure the engine rubbers with the nuts and washers provided. Before installing your engine and gearbox, you could save some time in later videos by fitting the rear of the two exhaust manifolds and the clutch slave cylinder flexible hose. With our engine and gearbox now in place, we can begin to attach some of our electrical connections. First, we're going to attach our reverse switch, like so. We can also attach our starter motor feed and battery feed. First we attach the main feed from our battery to the large terminal, followed by our loom feed. The electrical connection marked starter motor can now be connected to the small terminal. Finally, we're going to refit our front subframe and secure all bolts tightly in place. And now the remaining sections of our front wiring loom can be secured to our front subframe using the cable ties provided. Now we're ready to move on to the next video, where we'll be installing the remainder of our braking components.